Hey there, everyone. Welcome. This is Jennifer Richmond, and this is the Dwelling Richly podcast where we love Jesus, heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And today is April 30th. It is almost summer. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't feel quite like almost summer, but I think about it this way because tomorrow is May 1st. And it just feels like a whole new uh, season is going to begin off tomorrow. And uh, so we're going to kick off today kind of the beginning and tiptoeing in towards summer, our dwelling richly uh, concept for what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. So Bible study has wrapped up. We just finished going through Exodus through Deuteronomy, an incredible study that took us all the way through what we call the rest of the Torah because Two years ago, we finished Genesis, and that was the beginning of the Torah, and then this year we did Exodus and Deuteronomy, and of course last year we did First and Second Corinthians. So we just finished that big, beautiful, amazing study, and now we are on break from Bible study. The Dwelling Richly Bible Study is on break for the rest of the next few months, so basically the rest of the summer. So the end of spring through the rest of the summer, we will resume the Dwelling Witchley study on September 10th. And that is exactly 133 days from today. And so I thought this would be a great day to send out an encouragement to remind all my incredible Dwelling Witchley community members that, uh, you know, we're in this together and we want to continue to do exactly what we say we do when we call ourselves people who dwell richly in the word and we let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. So today I'm going to kick off a summer series. And again, we're kind of technically in spring. Obviously we're still in spring because summer doesn't really begin technically until the middle of June. But right now we're going to act like we're beginning summer. Woo! It's a beautiful, beautiful spring day here in Southern California. I look out my window and the skies are blue and the birds are chirping and flying around and the flowers are blooming and even in my grass, which I love seeing my yellow dandelions out there. But today is April 30th and I thought it'd be a great day to go ahead and kick off what we're going to be doing between now and September 10th when the next Dwelling Richly Bible study officially begins. And as I said, as we closed our final study for the Exodus to Deuteronomy Saved and Set Apart study, you know, as I said, at that point, I wrote out some ideas for you to stay in community and to stay in the Bible study mode during these next several months. And so today I'm going to talk about that and how to do that. So for starters, something to think about, <laughs> it's something kind of fun to think about, is on the National Day calendar. Do you guys follow that? Every now and then I look those up because it's kind of fun to see what that all means. On the national calendar today, there's a few fun things. Today's National Bubble Tea Day. Today is National Adopt a Shelter Pet Today. Today is National Raisin Day. And of course, you know, that means it's also National Oatmeal Cookie Day because that's like the best way to get raisins. But here's what I thought was pretty cool about today. Today is national, it's called Preparathon Day. And the idea of this day is to be prepared in case there was an emergency. And I thought, you know what, that's actually a pretty cool thing to do for us. We're not in an emergency right now, but I want us to be thinking about this in terms of preparing. And if you're like me, <laughs> you find it easier, I do, when I have a set routine and a schedule for my Bible study time. And so I want us to be thinking about how we will prepare to be successful when Bible study b does resume in September. So here we are, 133 days until our next Dwelling Richly Study starts, which will be September 10th, 2024. And let's be prepared. Let's do something that's intentional to get us through these months so that we don't just, you know, let the time evaporate. And we find ourselves on September 10th going, huh, look at me. I didn't even get into the word of God because I didn't have a set schedule, a set routine. So today's National Preparathon Day. And while it is a great idea to be prepared for a crisis, it's also a great idea to be prepared to live faithfully in the word and not just let these days ahead move on without a plan. And so I'm going to suggest a couple of thoughts for you to make a plan. And then I'm going to come on a few times a week from now until September 10th in this same format here, just to simply give you some encouragement. And we'll spend about 10 minutes together 
and then we'll call it. So if you have your Bible handy, grab it. If you don't, go ahead and grab it anyway. (laughs) Pause this and grab your Bible. And I want you to open up to Colossians chapter three. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version today from Colossians chapter three. Really simple. Here we go. So Paul is talking to the believers here that he's writing to and teaching in the church that is in Colossians. And he's saying, you know what? You don't have the old self anymore. If you are in Christ, you have the new self. You have been raised with Christ. You can set your minds that are on things above, not on things that are in the earth. You you have died. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And you're going to see him in glory. And so put to death the things that are earthly in you, the sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And uh, do all of this based on the account of the wrath of God that is coming. In those areas, he says, you have once walked, you were living in them, but you must now put them all away, put away anger and wrath and malice and slander, put away obscene talk. Don't lie to each other. Um, see that you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, that you are being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So Paul I just love this encouragement. Paul is encouraging everybody and reminding them that there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no just separation of circumcised and uncircumcised. He says, Christ is in all, Christ is for all for all of us. So he says, put on then as chosen ones, and this is in chapter three, verse 12, as chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, And if one is a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all, all of these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And then he says in verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. What a beautiful reminder for us in a time when we can feel so much turmoil and the lack of peace, whether the lack of peace manifests itself in our own mind and sense of anxiety, or if you're like me, where you over, you overthink things sometimes and you try to overdo, let the peace of Christ rule. The Lord has forgiven you. Forgive others. Have compassionate hearts. Live as one that is holy and beloved. Show kindness and humility and meekness and patience. Bear with one another. All of that above all, put on love. And then we get to the core, the central truth. Verse 16. How do we do this? How do we do this? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And what's going to end up happening? Well, as we let the word of Christ teaching each other, that's how we let it dwell in us richly, admonishing, like talk to each other point blank about issues, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in our hearts to God, whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the father through him. So simple, so beautiful so purposeful. Listen, I want you to focus in on this. Verse 16, chapter three of Colossians. Let the word of Christ dwell, take up residence, live in you richly. Listening to my voice here, focus on this. I want you to pay attention to this. One more minute. We're going to wrap it up. Put aside your devotionals, put aside your self-help books, Put aside the things that are outside of the word of God and just trust the Holy Spirit to teach you through his word. I know it's hard to read the word. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to do and how to think. Do you trust the Holy Spirit? When you said yes to Jesus, you said yes and open up your life and the Holy Spirit came to dwell in you. You need to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Just open up the Bible and spend some time. Tomorrow, we're going to get together in the Word. We're going to talk about what that looks like more. And then I shouldn't say tomorrow, but the next podcast, we're going to talk about what that looks like more and ways and and strategies and just simple opportunities for you to let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly and then for you to return the favor. And you dwell richly in the Word. And set aside the things that distract you from that, commit your way to him and use these next 133 days to be prepared so that when we start up Bible study together again in the fall, September 10th, 
you will have had a beautiful time in the word together. And don't forget, invite someone to do that with you. Reach out to a friend today and say, you know what? I don't want to do this alone. I want to do this with a friend and in community. So that's my encouragement for you today to to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, to make it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Just open up the word. And uh, I'll tell you one thing real quick, a quick hint. I'm going to be writing Psalm 119. I'm going to spend the rest of the summer writing and focusing in on that. So the next time we get together, I'll share some more tips with you on how to do that. But go back through and read Colossians 3 verses 1 through 17. Meditate on that between now and the next time we get back together. And until then, I will see you soon. Well, hopefully I'll see you soon. (laughs) Whatever we do, know that you are loved and prayed for and that you can let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God bless you, everybody. Bye-bye for now.